Hurricane Harvey only recently passed through Texas and Louisiana, wreaking havoc on many communities and countless Americans. Americans of all backgrounds and beliefs are banding together to help one another out. The Clarks watched as countless people came rolling through their town of Faro, Alabama. As thousands of Floridians flock to Alabama to avoid Hurricane Irma, one Alabama couple is ensuring that evacuees are well fed on their journey to higher ground. The Clark family said they would continue to serve hot, free food to those in need, as long as they could afford buying hot dogs. Through the danger, destruction, and pain, people come out of the woodwork to help their fellow man. Without a second thought, we are seeing Americans jump into action to save lives, rebuild from the ruins, or even hand out a simple hot dog. Oklahoma Store put a sign up that stunned everyone. The customers of local Oklahoma Store were stunned to see something extraordinary before they come in. The owner put a sign on the store window in order to send a strong message. Shauna Wiesnor, an employee in the store, stated for the local news that if the customers don't like the sign, they shouldn't come in the store, it's tacky, and it's gross, and we're adults, she stated. The most of the customers accepted the sign, if all the people are treated right. Anyhow, there are some customers that don't agree with the sign. Their argument is that the store sells liquor, and it's not a church or a family place. Please share this post on Facebook if you agree think that store owner did the right thing. Customers not happy about sign on front door. KFC's response too bad, it stays up. Police officers and other members of law enforcement have had it rough over the last few years. A free warm meal is the perfect way to recharge their bodies and minds, which in turn, will keep the streets of Gallipa Ellis even safer. The image of the sign hung at this KFC has since gone viral, receiving nearly over 6,000 shares and 10,000 likes on Facebook. Even the store's employees have commented on the post, saying that this is true and they really do serve police officers for free every single day of the year. This has created quite a stir in their neighborhood. Not everyone is as thrilled as they should be about the sign, though. Many people criticized the store owners, saying that not just police officers, but all first responders should be given this privilege. To silence the critics, the administrator of the Ohio Going Blue Facebook page commented that he couldn't agree more. This is a positive post, but some of you can't see the bigger picture. As an officer, I do not go into any establishment expecting, or, wanting anything to be free or even a discount, whether I'm in uniform or not, and I can tell you other officers feel the same way. We don't like special treatment. The fact is that KFC is acknowledging law enforcement, which is why this was posted. To those who stated that other first responders should also be acknowledged. My answer? Absolutely. Police officers dedicate their lives to keeping us safe, while asking nothing of the citizen in return. Omao anti-Trump actor's new movie sells one ticket on opening day. His crusade against Trump has backfired. Bigly. Opening night won't even cover the cost of the popcorn and soda. It's been a tough couple of months for Shia Labouf. His grandstanding He Will Not Divide Us event, which was supposed to be him trolling Trump backfired. He became an internet laughing stock. He was caught until just recently, facing assault and harassment charges over his reaction to people who trolled him back. With that still hanging over his head, he played an international game of cat and mouse with his He Will Not Divide Us live feed. He lost. Repeatedly. It wasn't even close. Each time he put up a flag, it was located by internet-savvy trolls who cross-checked details like weather, flight paths, and bird species to identify the location. He was taunted online with viral pics like these. But at least he's still got his acting. Right? Then came the big night. Opening night. And nobody showed up. Man down, 
a war thriller with Shia LaBeouf, grossed just £7, $8.70, when it premiered in a single UK theatre over the weekend, according to Comscore. That's the equivalent of selling a single ticket, given that the UK Cinema Association puts the average movie admission cost in the country at £7.21. Poor Shia, said Paul de Garabedian, senior media analyst at Comscore. That opening could be in the Guinness World Records or something. The film played in one location, Real Cinema in Burnley. It was simultaneously released digitally on demand, making the theatrical release something of an afterthought. It launches on DVD and Blu-ray next month, according to The Guardian. Variety. Call Guinness. Could that be that an actual record? It would be tough to beat that. ClashDaily.com's editor-in-chief, Doug Giles addresses our nation's abysmal wessification in his new book. Doug Giles, best-selling author of Raising Righteous and Rowdy Girls and editor-in-chief of the mega-blog, ClashDaily.com, has just penned a book he guarantees will kick hipster males into the rarefied air of masculinity. That is, if the man-child will put down his frappuccino, shut the hell up and listen and obey everything he instructs them to do in his timely and tornadic tome. In The Effeminization of the American Male, Giles takes Crispin from the unaccomplished, prissy and dank corridors of Wasville up the steep, treacherous and unforgiving trail that leads to Mantown. Secretly, everybody's getting tired of political correctness, kissing up. That's the kiss-ass generation we're in right now. We're really in a PC generation. Clint Eastwood. This is definitely one of the most politically incorrect books to ever hit the market. It will most certainly offend the entitled whiners, but it will also be a breath of fresh air to young males who wish to be men versus hipster dandies. Bill O'Reilly exclusive interview about his return on television Bill O'Reilly just revealed the possibility of him returning to television and the numerous offers he has received since leaving Fox News. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, O'Reilly talks about his life since leaving Fox News. When asked about the offers he received to return to TV, he responded, I haven't decided. There are some interesting projects in development, as they say in Hollywood, but it has to be the right situation. I'm waiting to see very specific details of the projects that people have pitched to us. And there have been many. I think by early October, we should have a pretty good vision of what we're going to do. He talked about the offer from One America News, where the CEO suddenly pulled his offer via Twitter. Yeah. I didn't make any yes or no on that. He was a very nice guy, and I thought I treated him very respectfully. But at that point, you know, we weren't going to make any decisions about long-term projects. So they, I guess, lost patience. When asked if he is looking for a bigger partner than One America he said. No, I wouldn't say I'm interested in partnering. I've got my own enterprise, Billerly.com which is extremely lucrative, and I can do that full-time. We have a very committed base of subscribers, and that'll only grow. I own that, and I don't have to partner with anybody. I'm a hired gun. If you want me to do something, I'm absolutely willing to listen, but I've got to feel that the odds of success are high. He talked about how Fox News is lacking a certain quality since he left and how his ratings helped them reminding them that he brought something very unique to the table. They're still a very strong brand, and they still have great correspondence, and their presentation is very, very professional. But I'm a different agent. I do things differently, and that's why we were very successful. So in a hurricane or breaking news coverage, I bring on certain people, and we develop story arcs. When I watched the Harvey coverage on television, there was a sameness to it and that would not have been the case on our show. Everyone is anticipating his return, and we hope is sooner than expected, Bill really has a unique quality that the television is missing right now. Please share this post on Facebook to support Bill O'Reilly. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below.
Muslim demands pig farmer move because they're building a mosque next door, farmer has perfect response. When an Islamic group moved in next door and told Craig Baker the pigs on his family's 200-year-old Texas farm had to go, he and his swine decided to fight back. In protest of being asked to move, Davis began staging elaborate pig races on Friday afternoons, one of the Islamic world's most holy days. Craig's neighbors, the Katy Islamic Association, have plans to build a mosque and community compound on the 11 acres they purchased alongside his farm. Baker, 46, a stone shop owner whose family has owned the farm for two centuries, says the association knew about the pigs when they bought the property, and it's not fair for them to ask him to get rid of the animals neighbors have been showing support for Baker's races even coming in the pouring rain and giving donations ranging from $100 to $1,000 to sponsor the events. Last Friday, more than 100 attended the pig races, and many say they don't want the mosque either. They'd fight for the rights of the Muslim group, while ignoring the rights of the 200-year-old, family-owned farm. A family has the right to raise their pigs on the same land they've had for over 200 years. Justin J. Leno risks his career to expose truth about Trump. The American people are getting sick of the endless dumping on President Trump. The former late-night host explained that comedians are only alienating half of their potential fans by recycling the same tired Trump jokes again and again. The repetition of inane jabs aimed at President Trump reveals that the mainstream media entertainment industry is more interested in generating propaganda than they are in making people laugh. President Trump even made fun of himself during his speech at the Al Smith charity dinner in New York. Measured jokes jettisoned for baseless insults such as attacking the First Lady as a prostitute or Stephen Colbert's accusation that President Trump has engaged sexually with Vladimir Putin. Fans quickly grow tired when attacks on President Trump is the only joke in an hour-long comedy show. If we wanted baseless lies against President Trump, we could just watch CNN. What do you think about this comment below?